BYD. They're here in Canada. And this is an enormous truck. In this video, I'm taking you on a trip to the first ever EV and charging expo presented by Electric Autonomy in downtown Toronto, Canada. I'm Josh West and this is Josh West 24-7. I'm a 15-year veteran of legacy automotive, but now I see that things are changing as we hurtle towards electrification at an alarming rate. So let's head down to the EV Expo and see what's going on. Join me here at the EV and Charging Expo 2023 here in Toronto, Ontario, presented by Electric Autonomy. We've got some amazing commercial EV charging solutions, as well as heavy duty trucks, a whole bunch more surprises. Let's go check it out. So let's head into the show and see what it's all about. So we'll head over to the left aisle here, which will be the first aisle. And you can see we've got uh, Siemens, which specializes in e-mobility and EV charging. There's Pion Power there. They do EV chargers and uh, grid management, Toronto Hydro and a few others. Freewire, which does DC charging and battery integration. Uh, ENS does smart cities. Universal EV chargers is right there, among others. And if we'll head up here over to the right, you can see we've got ABB DC fast chargers. And uh, here's Lightning E-Motors actually, just uh, panning over here to my left. There's Lightning E-Motors and what they do are conversions mainly of cargo vans. Uh, they do shuttle buses, cube vans, box trucks, even school buses. And they do some cool mobile energy charging products as well. Big batteries built into campers and whatnot. Um, here we've got a couple of utilities, Electra, uh, EV Connect, which does an EV app, uh, Leading Ahead, which does charging infrastructure, Ramco, charging infrastructure, heading across here, there's Switch, we'll get to them in a minute, we're going to curve around here to the left, that's the big stage where all the speakers come out. But here's Ford Pro, so this is Ford Commercial, and they're uh, promoting all of their electric uh, solutions as far as electric lightnings. You can see the police truck there on the video in the background, uh, but the Ford E-Transit is kind of the big one they're pushing as well as, uh, of course, their line of chargers. Over here, ChargePoint has their Recharge Coffee Corner that they've sponsored, uh, getting everybody caffeinated. And then here around the back, they've got this cool center where you can line up and head out for an electric vehicle test drive. There's a variety of vehicles you can try out, the Ford Mustang Mach-E among others. And so we'll just head back across, uh, head back across the floor here. You can see the switch booth and uh, up behind there, there's that uh, electric transit RV. And there we've got a Ford Mach-E plugged in in the switch area there. We're gonna get back over there in a minute. Uh, over here on the left, we've got Petro Canada. Um, they're touting their coast-to-coast -coast electric charger network uh, right across Canada. You can go right from uh, Nova Scotia right out to Vancouver. And uh, there's an electric Peterbilt truck on the left as well as an electric bus for the city of Brampton. Here's a little closer look at the Fitz Electric. Actually, these guys do electric conversions and you can see somebody's in there working. What a cool truck. Uh, I'd love to do a video on one of those. Uh, in the future. There's Spark Power, uh, a couple of other guys, DC fast charging guys, electric mobility, uh, national energy equipment. We covered those guys at the gas station show. Uh, here's Chem Power. They've got some neat stuff, including mobile charging solutions, big battery packs. Coming up to Sarit here. I'm actually talking with Sarit about doing an in-depth video 
They've got some really cool units. This is their new little four-wheel four dump truck utility vehicle. They do uh, micro, um, micro mobility uh, solutions, uh, and I'm working on a video with them. Uh, they've got a really cool three-wheeled uh, personnel mover. Uh, here's Wallbox. Uh, those guys have got a beautiful unit there. Um, there's Ello City. They do public EV charging. Here's the OPP electric Mustang, uh, the Mach-E. In fact, I think I saw this vehicle, unless they have more than one, but I saw this vehicle on the 427 highway, uh, the, on the freeway. They're doing it, doing a high-speed takedown, actually. It was pretty cool. This stealth uh, Mustang Mach-E. Over here, we've got Project Aero. Now, Project Aero is an all-Canadian electric EV. This is kind of a proof-of-concept type vehicle. Um, the country spent millions of dollars developing it. It was all developed here in Canada. They're very, very proud of it, backed by the Ontario Tech University. Their ACE facility is the one that put this all together. Um, of course, in very close partnership with the Automotive Parts Manufacturers Association. AMPA. I'll put a link below. Uh, there's some really inf interesting information on this vehicle. I touched on it as well in my auto show video, but you can click on the link below and check that out. This is really cool. This is uh, Giardin Energy, which they do Bluebird electric school buses. Very cool. I'm sure I butchered the pronunciation of that. So here's Power On. These guys are a utility. They're a division of Ontario Power Generation. Um, over here to my right, here's Dash Chargers. They do networked EV charging solutions. Um, pretty cool units. They've got uh, Ivy. There's Ivy Charging Network, local charging network. There's EcoTank. These guys are amazing. Digital washer fluid dispensers. Hopefully we'll see those at Superchargers. There's Seven Gen. We're gonna look at their big truck in a sec. Uh, Test Force, they do testing equipment and a couple of others there. We're gonna spin around the front of this Ford E Transit. Uh, very cool camper conversion. There we go, that's the truck we wanna check out there. Uh, beautiful truck. This is a Peterbilt truck that's been converted. It was originally diesel. You can see the battery packs there. Uh, they've got a full hydraulic ramp, electric over hydraulic uh, loading ramp there, kind of an elevator type thing on the back with the roll-up door. Um, you can see Go Bolt. This is their truck. Uh, they do some really cool stuff. Um, basically, uh, sustainable logistics. And uh, Seven Gen does EV fleet leasing, and so that's uh, who set this up here. Just check out this charging port. You can see you got the CCS connector in the J1772, uh, but very cool truck. Here we're over at Switch Controls, and uh, what Switch does is smart charging for busy buildings. That's what their website says. But I did talk to one of the reps there, and their specialization is in condos and office buildings, as well as they do some uh, apartments, hotels. Uh, but mainly they, they um, focus on condos. Uh, the interesting thing is they have these uh, compact chargers that are able to be networked together and they meter the electricity and balance them out um, on a need by need basis. They've got their own app, uh, user cards. So anybody staying in the condos, you just tap your card, plug in your car to charge. He said right now they're focusing on more common areas to have these chargers that 10 or 12 of them lined up and that sort of thing. Uh, this is a cool unit here. This is actually a partnership that Switch is doing, kind of a co-venture here with LG. You can see that big screen up top for advertising and all of that sort of thing. We'll zoom in here and get a little closer look. Um, and what the rep was telling me is that they'll have these built in, uh, in parking lots or even underground parking with, they've got two level two chargers in the bottom there, but they're able to gain some uh, income, not only from charging um, the vehicles, uh, people paying to charge, but also from the advertising uh, that's displayed on the screen. There's screens on both sides. And so here we are, guys. Here's kind of an overview aerial shot of the show. And uh, yeah, really, uh, everybody that I spoke to was very positive, very happy to be there. So here we are at the BYD electric transport truck. And we're going to check it out here. Here we are at the BYD heavy transport. This is a cab over design, fully battery electric. Here we go. Wow, this thing's enormous. Very, very cool. So we got a big touchscreen display up and to the right. Uh, we've got some analog gauges in front of me with a touchscreen display in the center. Big steering wheel, lots of storage overhead, storage behind me. Uh, looks like a pretty simple gear shift to the right. A few switches, power switch, defrost, horn, uh, brakes, and all that sort of thing. 
uh, two-seater truck cab here, and it's a cab over design. So you really are sitting on these the wheels up front, uh, which gives you amazing maneuverability. But BYD, they're here in Canada. And this is an enormous truck. Wow, I'm glad I got to check it out. And so here we are taking a look at the back end of the BYD transport truck and its electric powertrain. But in a few seconds, we're gonna be listening into a question and answer period with the president of Volkswagen Canada, Pierre Boutin. He'll be interviewed by founder and president of electric autonomy, Nino Di Cara, and they'll be talking about their new Gigafactory. invite you to join me on the stage. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, that, that was a good note, but it's our generation and it's up to us and everybody here in the room, we all have a responsibility to move this forward and uh, what a tremendous step the Volkswagen has taken in making this investment here in Canada to build a North American uh, uh, footprint and, and operation. Uh, to kick things off, I'd like to ask uh, uh, if, if you could give us an update on the situation with St. Thomas and the progress of building out the factory and really what's the, the overview of how things are progressing there? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I think it's important to mention I, uh, what is Volkswagen Group Canada, what I'm responsible of. Volkswagen Group Canada has been established in the country for over 70 years for the distribution of Volkswagen, Audi and Lamborghini vehicles. Uh, we work essentially with our, our dealer network throughout the country. We take care of the customers. And uh, we actually provide a lot of services to the different brands of our company, not only in Canada, but also throughout the region in North America. So PowerCo is really the investors behind it. Obviously, it's a Volkswagen group. PowerCo is owned by the Volkswagen group. And we've been supporting our colleagues at PowerCo to make this project uh, happen right here in Canada. So but what I can tell you for uh, the, the early stage, it is progressing very well. It is definitely uh, uh, up to speed to, to what we need to have it because we're aiming to have the first batteries coming out of the factory by 2027 and we're really counting on this obviously to bring more vehicles in the marketplace, electric vehicles. So, uh, so far it's been just a few weeks uh, but we're definitely on track and uh, we're eager to continue to, to make this project a real a reality for the community of St. Thomas. That's awesome. It's great to hear that it's moving along uh, quickly out of the gate. And so obviously a big economic opportunity for the region and uh, obviously you're going to need a lot of support from the supply chain and the vendor community. And um, to, to anyone out there who's thinking, uh, actually I've got a service or a product that I, I think Volkswagen will need, um, what kind of services and vendors are you looking for right now? And what's the right way to engage with Volkswagen? Yeah. It's a very good question. actually. Uh, I, I mentioned that in the presentation earlier. I think it's really critical right now, and that made certainly an, an important, I'd say played a very important role in our decisions to come to Canada and to St. Thomas. We are looking for sustainability. We're extremely eager for innovations that bring additional elements of sustainability, sustainable energy. Why Canada, for instance? You have Canada is one of the cleanest uh, mining uh, in, in the world. And, so if you're working in the field of, of all of these elements where you want to reduce the footprint, uh, uh, the CO2 footprint, of course, it's all related to our core business, which is uh, uh, mobility, right? But uh, this is really important. It's, it's one of these elements that in the get-go with every vendors we, we work with, we have, as I mentioned, strong criteria. We have audits related to this. We're looking for people that can help us further transform this sustainable mobility. So, and, and from there, I would say uh, it can certainly be in touch with us here at Volkswagen Canada, who will transfer any requests, any spe specific uh, requests for meetings or things that you feel could make a difference for the project in St. Thomas to our colleagues uh, in Germany at uh, PowerCo. Awesome. So, uh, St. So Thomas is, is going to be providing battery cells for the North American market. Um, what does market integration look like, and, and how, how do you see that supply chain really taking shape? Yeah, as I mentioned, the, the, again, the, we are hoping for the first batteries to come out of, of the factory of the battery sales. As you know, battery sales is one element we need to bring the to make the battery with the housing after. But we, we expect this to happen early January of 2027. So in the meantime, obviously, we have other sourcing of, of batteries that we are we're buying from uh, outside vendors. And, uh, and this is really critical for us because this is when I talk about 25 vehicles for the North American market. 
we want these vehicles to obviously, uh, all the parts and components and clean batteries to be sourced in North America. It makes a lot of sense. It's closer to the customers. It's in local currencies. So it's really important for us to have this factory uh, going so that we can further bring uh, additional electric vehicles and contribute to you know, achieving 60% plus by 2030 of all vehicles sold in North America being 100% electric. Awesome. So let, let's chat a little bit about the, uh, the supply side. Um, so Volkswagen's global EV sales were up 42% in uh, Q1 this year. That, that's quite an achievement. Uh, by, any, by any measure, um, after what was already a strong 2022 for the group of EVs. Uh, is this in line with expectations and how does Canada compare and what are your expectations for your, for your products here? We're, we're doing actually a bit better than the 40 some percent, the 40 percent of the group, or over 60 percent. That said, we're coming in from a, from a very small number, I have to say. So our expectations are much higher. We just started the production in the, in the assembly of the IV4, for instance, in Chattanooga. All vehicles previously were imported from Germany, which limited our, our ability to, to, to really crank up a certain volume. Uh, and now the factory is gaining speed. So we believe by uh, the time we reach 2024, we will be in a very uh, strong environment in terms of you're going to see much stronger uh, numbers and volume. And that, that is the same thing also for my colleagues within the Volkswagen group. So we look at Canada as a game. Consumers are extremely eager. Uh, they're demanding, they're asking a lot of questions. So the, the interest is there. We got to bring these vehicles and uh, we're committing it and uh, we're going to make it happen. Terrific. So the ID4, uh, as, you, as you showed, is, uh, is the best selling EV for Volkswagen. And obviously it's been in the market for, for some time now. Um, I wonder if you could point to what learnings uh, the, the group has obtained from that vehicle. You mentioned the ID7 and the Buzz is coming to market, but I imagine the learners from the ID4 will probably be in the, in the next generation. So I wonder if you could share what you've learned and what developments you might see in the coming vehicles. Uh, actually, right now, I, I would think anyone who's driving an EV because these people are really pioneers, right? Uh, we get a lot of information from them. They're certainly very demanding and likely so, uh, and they're helping us actually get it much better. Uh, first, strategically for us, it was really important to hit, uh, I would call it the heart of the, the car industry in Canada, which is what, which is an SUV, uh, which we call it in our, our, our language, an ASUV, so, uh, and uh, which is basically the category of a T1, for instance. And that's why the interest of our organization to bring the ID4 here in Canada. So we wanted to tailor it right away to, to, vehicle, to, uh, to, to, to vehicles that Canadians like, Canadians appreciate, that the, the size of the vehicle. So that's the first element. What we've learned also with all the feedback we're getting, we're getting uh, people are, are very patient. People are eager to, to get one of these vehicles. Uh, they want more information than ever before. So we started probably uh, communicating with customers like never before, uh, way ahead of delivery of the of vehicles, providing them with a lot of information. Believe it or not, I talked about the ship for instance earlier. We have some of our customers who started tracking the ship from Germany to Canada when we were importing the first electric vehicles. Why? We to get our hands on it. Well, it, frankly, so we're learning uh, a great deal. But again, it shows the enthusiasm. And I will stress this element too. Uh, what, when we talk about making a more sustainable supply chain, it's not just the electric vehicle. I mentioned it earlier. Is the way it's built. Um, you know, what's the overall uh, CO2 footprint? Uh, where are these elements being built? We have quite a few requests. People want to certify the batteries today, which I find it's a fabulous, uh, and we're extremely eager for that because there, there's batteries and there's other batteries, right? Uh, how, how, the, how the minerals are going to be sourced? Where are they going to be sourced? So consumers are very demanding, very well educated, the pioneers of electric vehicles, that's what we're hearing asking again a lot more information, good question, which challenges us in return. And from there we say, okay, how do we adapt? How do we adjust? How do we go again beyond what we have normally been doing for so many years with the combustion engines? Um, so uh, as, as, as CEO, you, you're overseeing obviously this, this transition. And uh, I'd love to know what's on your dashboard. What are the metrics that you're looking at? To, to, to steer this transition, to make sure your organization is ready, ready to service your, your, your customers 
uh, ambition and desire for uh, at the speed that the market is moving at. So, what... yeah, it's it's a very good question because I talked about transforming the company. Uh, we're working very heavily on our side, even if we are a, a small organization in Canada as a national sales company. What can we do with distributed parts? Uh, you know, what are we using in terms of material? What what kind of route are we using? Uh, what kind of transporter are we using and all of these elements. So all of a sudden the question again of the, the, the CO2 elements comes again as I mentioned earlier always in the forefront. So and I, I look at the initiatives. Uh, we, we looked at the uh, we're developing a net zero plan for our company here in Canada looking at what's our, our, our CO2 footprint. What are the things we could uh, influence tomorrow if we start changing this, right? Um, and, and it goes much beyond because obviously you got the interest I talked about uh, I, I will share with all of you today, while ID4 is still uh, a very small number, proportionally speaking, what we sell in this country, uh, it's going to be less than 10% of what we're going to sell this year, yet the number one vehicle being visited on Volkswagen.ca is the ID4. So uh, we have today over 14,000 orders of ID4, and some for a long time with firm deposit from customers. If I go electric, I continue with electric. Same thing with the ID bus. We have tens of thousands of people demanding. So these are some of the KPIs. When you look at the interest of people, even though you know we've always looked at obviously our sales, uh, you know, and, and all of these elements relative to this. Now it's about the awareness of people. It's about the what type of question and information they're looking for, and and. Uh, 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 and, and frankly, what we're doing also, we're changing our business model slowly but surely. Uh, we're more in a reservation mode than, uh, you know, bringing the vehicles at a dealership and people get frustrated, frustrated, they don't know exactly what's the price. This has pushed us to be fully transparent in terms of our price, not only for, any, uh, uh, for the electric vehicles, but for the entire lineup of our vehicles, you see? So, so I love this challenge, you know, and, and there's the element, uh, you know, they, we, we want to take a leadership role, uh, and and obviously it's been uh, uh, it's a long journey, right? It's, we're not going to get there tomorrow. But when I see leadership, it's not I'm not looking at the sales figures. Yes, we want to be still certainly doing better in the EV sales than we are in, 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 in combustion engine. We see some real potential for the growth of our brands in the North American market because of the EV advantage that we've built over the years. But beyond that, uh, we want to be also capable to influence. Volkswagen has over 650,000, Volkswagen group over 650,000 people around the world. And just the fact that now we're sitting down with thousands of suppliers and talking to them about our requirements, they challenge us with their innovation too. So all of a sudden, we're, built, we're buying for billions and billions of, of euros every year. We feel that we can make also an impact on the economy, not just through the vehicles, which is our car business, but everything else we do. And as I mentioned, we're very eager to go beyond today. We want to make sure that the future uh, Volkswagen crude vehicles are equipped with a Volkswagen crude battery where we know where everything is coming from. We own the technology, we've done it ourselves, and we are responsible and accountable for this. Fantastic. I've got two more questions for you, if, if I may. Uh, one thing that really struck me with your presentation was um, Obviously, with a factory like St. Thomas's, it's a billion, billions, billions of dollar deal, and so obviously there's a lot of hard numbers and hard negotiating. But you mentioned that the personal relationships are actually one of the, the, the key points that help enable it. I'd love you just to expand on that and, and what that means, and, and kind of really what you're expecting you know, when you are negotiating. In that way. Well, you know, I think I'll just simply say the following: is in life, what is it? In everything we do, obviously in business, if there's no trust, there's no future. In your personal relationship with friends and family, if there's no trust, nothing is possible. When there's when you build some trust, then you understand that you take a risk, your party is taking a risk, and we go together. And, and I, I think that and these elements, there's no books, right? Of course, there's thousands of books that have been written, certainly by Harvard Business and, and so on, about developing trust in business. But this is a major element. What I really like, we had uh, the Minister Smith earlier, and, and everybody understands, and I think that if you, you, you talk to different levels of governments in this country, people understand that this is, we are at a crossroad. This is a, a major 
uh, stepping stone for the future of our country. Not just electric mobility, not just energy, not just, uh, it's, it's about everything we do. And, and when you meet, and that's an element also that, that was said uh, in the uh, press conference in St. Thomas, not only by, uh, by the premiers, but the premier Ford and, and, and Prime Minister Trudeau, but also on our part, is that we really recognize sitting down together that there's definitely, we share more values. Yes, there's an economic transaction. Yes, there's some investments from the different parties. But looking at the way that the Canadian uh, uh, team has worked together, looking for solution, that's what most people do in this room here. They're entrepreneurs. And you know how fast you are. You need to look for solution. Big companies like us, it's been a little bit more difficult. And I would say it's probably, we created a separate company to go even faster, which is called PowerCo. And I tell you, I love this. It's pushing us, even also at Volkswagen Group, to do better, to go faster, and to be better at what we do. Oh, that's awesome. So um, we, we've had two fabulous days at the EV and Charging Expo with a, a great number of people visiting and discussing and, and trying to push forward on the opportunities. And as our closing keynote, I wonder what message you might have for the audience and for the broader audience outside of this venue, we're recording and we'll be broadcasting this uh, uh, in, in the coming days. What, what message you might have for the broader community out there? Thank you for the opportunity again to, to, to you, Nino, and, and to everyone. Uh, and I, I said it earlier, but I really mean it. Everybody can make an impact. You know, a few years ago, I was in a room in Germany where we had all of our colleagues from around the world and and we're talking about where we are, where we want to be. And the first element was like, do we all, each and every one of us, know what is our CO2 footprint? I have a CO2 footprint, you do, right? You can go and calculate it and start looking at the decisions you make every day. Is it the best decisions for sustainability? Are we really looking at it or we're we just looking at the price, right, and everything we do? Of course, we all have the economic pressure of making sure we bring the most to our families. And, I, and again, I look at the entrepreneurs in the room too also, because you can go sure bet with what's happening today, or you can invest in new technology and innovation, which brings a lot of risk, but at the same time, this is how you can really make a difference. And the time is now, as I mentioned, at least if I talk for our business, we understand very well we are at a crossroad, and we gotta go very fast because we need a lot more gigafactories. We need a lot more mining of critical minerals in a sustainable manner. We need a lot more of everything faster. So if we want to have an impact on the climate, so never underestimate the impact you can have. Because we all have friends and families. You start changing your behaviors overnight and we're gonna make something better tomorrow. So thanks for the opportunity again. Thanks for everything you do to help us bring the message of uh, the electric, sustainable electric mobility for Canadians in the years to come. And to all of you, again, who participated and invested your time and efforts in the last two, two days. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today and for being so generous with your time and with your answers. And thank you very much for the audience and a round of applause for us. I just want to say, really Hi, enjoyed the show. My name is Josh, and I run a YouTube channel, Josh West 24-7, oh, awesome. all EV focused. I oh, come wicked. from Legacy Auto, so I went full time oh, into cool. YouTube just for EV education. I just want to say you guys did a great job. Oh, so that's really cool. Thank you very thank much. You Do you all right, so that's a wrap of the EV and Charging Expo here in Toronto, Ontario, brought to you by Electric Autonomy. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.